What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything you need to know about and what's happening here in our country right now here today. U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy weighs in on cutting budget and potentially the U.S. military defense. That's right here. You'll see this is because the U.S. government to hit the debt ceiling on Thursday. And Congress is going to have to do something, we think, we hope. Uh, Republicans and Democrats are going to have to come to some type of agreement, hopefully. We don't know because they work at a snail's pace. And so far, nothing has happened. Kevin McCarthy, the leader of the Republicans and also the leader of the House of Representatives, uh, now the Speaker of the House, weighs in on defense spending cuts amid GOP divisions and potentially reducing our military spending and the, the, basically the amount that the government gives to our entire military. That's right. And he also weighs in on the big story. I don't know which one's bigger here. You guys let me know your thought here. But maybe the hot topic story here. President Biden's classified documents and what Republicans want to do about it. Take a listen. But first, I want to get your take on the breaking news. What are you going to do about all of these classified documents being found in Joe Biden's possession? Well, it just shows the hypocrisy and why the American public does not trust their government. You know, Congress has an independent constitutional obligation to oversee all aspects of the Justice Department, and that includes special counsels as well. And so we will have a role in overseeing what's transpiring here. What's real concerning to me is how justice is applied, and is it applied equally? Why do you raid President Trump? His wasn't just lock, was padlock. They knew it was there. They could have come and taken it at any time they wanted. They were communicating with one another. Now we're finding time and again, a locked garage door that opens and closes by a push of the button? How many years has this vice president who's been in office for more than 40 years had these documents? Who's been in and out of there? So they apply a special counsel, but how many agents do they apply to that and apply to President Trump as well? This is just hypocrisy, and I'm tired of this Justice Department that we found that went after parents and others, that they utilize it to go after people because they have different political beliefs. That is what's wrong with government, and this is a prime example of why we passed this week a new select committee that will fall under Jim Jordan's uh, committee for the weaponization of government, that we can look into what the FBI has been doing from Twitter and everywhere else and change the course where we can now trust our law enforcement um, from the FBI per place again. A lot of the whistleblowers have come in very concerned about what has happened to this agency and get it back to the place we know it should be. Well, it feels like there's so much politics involved. Devin Nunes, your former colleague, joined me on Friday to talk about Robert Herr. Here's what he said about this new special counsel. Watch. This special counsel that was appointed to look at Joe Biden is somebody we're very familiar with. He is a Russia hoaxer himself. And I think the Republicans better check in. He has a lot of explaining to do because he was involved in the letter that was from the FBI to the public that said that we were going to endanger national security if we released that, released the memo at the time. Well, I mean, it's just incredible. It's incredible to me, Speaker McCarthy, that this is the person they chose. He's got, you know, dirt on his hands from the Russia collusion lie. Of the thousands of people who have worked at the FBI, why is it every time there's an investigation of a Republican, they're always tied together in a small little loop? Couldn't we have an independent person in the FBI that has no ties to anything to investigate something? Why is it always from a small protected group of friends are the only ones that they put in to have counsel? That is why we had moved for a new select committee of the weaponization. We will get to the bottom of this no matter how long it takes us and how hard we have to fight. There's one thing I think, Maria, I hope the American public realize from watching the race for speaker. 
I will never give up. That means I will never give up on you on getting the truth. And, and you did that this week. You kept your promises in terms of uh, removing or rescinding the funding for the IRS. Joe Biden wants 87,000 new IRS agents. You've got 15,000 border agents. What a, what a comparison. Now, just to pause there for a second, you know, I'd like to take a, a realistic point of view on everything. You know, I know the Republicans attack the IRS thing over and over and over, and they have for, for years, even before the whole 87,000 IRS agents being approved here. But I see so many comments in the comment sections all the time from people who knows if they're Republicans or Democrats or anybody waiting on their tax returns for years, for years. And or months, you know, who knows how long people are waiting here. And a lot of it's because there's just not enough people working there. And we think about 87,000 new people being hired. First of all, only a fraction of that has actually been hired. They're, they're saying that it could take up to 10 years to actually hire that many new agents. But we think about 87,000 new agents. It sounds like a lot, right? But you got to remember here that there's 330 million people in the United States. So if you actually think about 87,000 people, new people working at the IRS to cover 330 million people for the entire population of the United States, it's really not that much. So think about that. The other agency I know that needs more people working there is the Social Security Administration uh, because they have a lot of departments as well, SSI, SSDI, veterans, uh, which is kind of underneath the Social Security umbrella per se. But Social Security Administration is another one. They're, they're drastically in need of more employees. And uh, same thing, like if you go to apply for benefits under SSI or SSDI or something like that, I've just read the horror stories and I've, I've heard the horror stories that it could take years to actually get the benefits and you have to go through just uh, process after process after process and it could just take forever, especially if you become disabled or something like that along the way or some just, just you know, there's so many different circumstances. It's just one scenario. But sometimes if you have to go to a social security office, if you're in a populated town or populated city, you can wait in line for hours sometimes. Uh, you know, this is the, the problem with some of these government bureaus is that um, th sometimes they just don't have enough help. And now that we go into tax season here, um, I have personally waited on hold uh, for the IRS for, <laughs> I don't know, it was like an hour or so. And the automated system hung up on me and said, sorry. We it, it said some something like sorry we're too busy or something like that and it hung up on me. Okay, it said call another time. So um, the, this is the kind of the problem here is that you know and we, we have the new story here. I just did a video on it where the IRS is sending out it was like twelve million checks for over it was an average of twelve hundred and thirty two dollars. Those checks are actually from 2020 tax returns being amended for various different reasons. 2020 tax returns, guys. So think about that. It's now 2023. This is how long this has been going on. So just kind of let that sink in a little bit. If you think that the IRS doesn't need, and again, just think of this, whether you're a Republican, a Democrat, or whatever, uh, imagine if you've been waiting on a refund from your 2020 tax returns. Now, honestly, the only kind of downside to this is if you actually end up getting audited, which if you don't end up getting audited, it's it's really kind of probably not a bad thing because there's more if you have to actually need help from getting your tax refund or you need to call the IRS or anything along those lines. I think that the whole, you know, IRS agents being armed and coming to get you, does anybody think that's real? Uh, does anybody know of a story where an IRS agent is armed and actually going to come get you? Has anybody actually even seen that happen? You know, so I mean, you guys can let me know your thoughts here in the comments. But here's what Kevin McCarthy has to say 
about cutting money from the military. Take a listen. What's next? I want to ask you about the debt ceiling and the bills that you are looking at to bring to the floor. Let's take a short break and continue our conversation. There's a debate right now about uh, a bill that's going to come to the floor later on this year about raising the debt ceiling. Should we be raising the debt ceiling? You have to. Talking about on the day that America can't pay its debt, that has potentially disastrous outcomes. And that means that and once American debt goes into default, a lot of people can't own it anymore. And American debt doesn't cross default, but it's cumulative. The T-bill defaults, the next week T-bill defaults, the next week T-bill defaults, pension plans have to sell. Uh, it, it, it is so potentially dangerous, we shouldn't get anywhere near it. We are near it. That's J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon with me last week in an exclusive interview on Fox Business, Mornings with Maria, on the fiscal cliff the economy is facing. Late last week, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen uh, informed Congress, wrote a letter to Kevin McCarthy, uh, that this week the department will begin taking extraordinary measures to avoid default on the $31.4 trillion in national debt. The Treasury is expected to exhaust all of its accounting maneuvers by early June, setting up a showdown in Congress over raising the debt ceiling. I am back with the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. Mr. Speaker, what are you going to do about the debt ceiling? Well, as we hit this statutory debt limit once again, I do think it's worth a moment to pause and look, how did we get here? And first of all, Maria, there is no doom right today. The hundreds of billions of dollars the government currently has, we won't hit our debt limit to really this summer. So let's take a moment and realize why did we get here? I mean, if you look just in the last four years that Democrats were in the majority, they increased discretionary spending by 30%. When Republicans were in the majority for the eight years prior, they didn't increase it by $1. So that's $400 billion a year we spend more. In the last two years, they have taken us from spending four trillion to seven trillion. They have added ten trillion dollars in the next ten years. We are now going to have deficits for a trillion dollars a year for as long as the eye can see. So what I really think we would do is treat this like we would treat our own household. If you had a child, you gave them a credit card, and they kept hitting the limit, you wouldn't just keep increasing it. You'd first see what are you spending your money on? How can we cut items out? Every government has to do this. Every state has to balance their budget, county, city. For the White House to say they won't even look at it, that they can't find one penny out of a dollar of eliminating waste, I think they're just trying to put us into bankruptcy. What I am saying, and it's my conversation with the president on our first conversation, let's sit down together. Let's look at the places that we can change our behavior. The first thing I would say is, why don't you make the House and the Senate both produce a budget? They don't produce a budget, so you know they're wasting money. Why don't you say the House and Senate both have to do appropriation bills? The Senate didn't even do appropriation bills, and then two senators wrote a $1.7 trillion bill yeah. right before Christmas that no one could read. Are you going to tell me there's no waste in that? Yeah. Why don't we look at, this is hardworking taxpayers' yeah. money. Right, and we I understand that. We can find and eliminate those things. That's well, all we're saying. Let's sit down and change our behavior for the good of America, because what we're going to do is bankrupt this country and bankrupt these entitlements if we don't change our behavior today. But they're not going to do it. Speaker McCarthy, you know this. We've already seen the arrogance in full scale. Last week, Karine Jean-Pierre said there will be no negotiation. The Congress has to raise the debt ceiling. We will not get anywhere close to this. There will be no negotiation. Now, did you make an agreement with the Freedom Caucus that you would go back to 2022 spending levels? Because I spoke with Congressman Michael Waltz last week, and he said, if you do that, that's going to be a $75 billion cut in defense spending. Are you willing to cut defense spending to meet this and not have any negotiation with the White House as Joe Biden wants? Well, first, let's just take a pause. If we go back to 22 levels, that was what we were spending just two, three weeks ago. That's not cutting defense by $75 billion. 
does defense getting more than $800 billion, are there areas that I think they could be more efficient in? Yeah, eliminate all the money spent on wokeism. Eliminate all the money that they're trying to find different fuels and they're worried about the environment to go through. I want our men and women trained to be able to defend themselves, to secure, to have the best weapon systems possible. So yeah, I'm sure they can find some places that they could be more efficient. We have some of the best Navy SEALs, some of the best Rangers. They come to me every single day as they serve in Congress and tell me where that waste is in the Pentagon and others and want to be more efficient. But every single level of government should be doing that. This is not our money. This is the hardworking taxpayers' money. We should start every day. How could we be more efficient? How can we deliver a more effective to the American public? And how can we do it in a more secure way that we don't spend as much? Why would we sit back and be so arrogant to say, no, there's no waste in government? Why wouldn't we look at all the money that poured out during COVID? What money of that has not been spent? Why wouldn't you pull that back in? Why yeah. wouldn't you make but Congress and Senate produce they're not going to agree to a spending cap. They're not going to agree to a spending cap. Well, Maria, I don't believe that's the case because when Donald Trump was president and when Nancy Pelosi was speaker, that's exactly what happened for them to get a debt ceiling lifted last time. They agreed to a spending cap. I believe we can sit down with anybody who wants to work together. I believe this president could be that person. That's the conversation I had with the president. I want to sit down with him now so there is no problem. I'm sure he knows there's places that we can change and put America on a trajectory that we save these entitlements instead of put them into a bankruptcy the way they have been spending. So, so Make us do a budget. Make us do appropriations out in the public. Just doing that would save tremendous amounts of money. So just to be clear, you're not going to do anything this week unless you can sit down with Biden to discuss this because you know that there's more money to move around and the real crisis happens in June. And at that time, you are going to try to stick to 2022 levels by cutting out fringe like the wokeism in defense and perhaps elsewhere. Yeah, there, there's plenty of places we can find efficiencies and eliminate waste. The idea that a $1.7 trillion omnibus bill was written by two senators who were retiring, where nobody got to debate it, I know we could find a lot of places we can eliminate. The idea that you increase spending just in the last four years by 30 percent, 400 billion a year, yeah. that you added 10 trillion just with these Democrats in power. I know when we were in power for those eight years, the discretionary spending went up zero. So All what right. you find, like every single household, the first thing you need to do is a budget. And, and then you prioritize right. where your money should be spent. Defense is a very number one priority. Now, just to be clear here, they did get to read through the, the $1.7 trillion bill before it passed because I got to see the bill before it passed. So they did get to read it before it passed. So just to be clear here on that, I didn't read through the entire 4,000 pages or whatever it was, but I did get to see it. <laughs> so I didn't want to read through it, but I could have if I wanted to. Um, but, you know, Kevin McCarthy, you know, does make some good points here that, you know, so for example, on the 800 and some billion dollars they spend on defense, um, that's not even audited. So that's kind of something that's just kind of been done for a long time. That was over half of the $1.7 trillion goes to defense, uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, et cetera. Um, that money just goes to each department and then doesn't even get audited. So, you know, there's been a long time kind of running jokes that they spend $2,000 on a toilet seat and who knows what happens to the money. That's because the money doesn't get audited. We don't know actually what happens to the money. They just give X amount of billions of dollars to each department, and that's that. So who knows where the money actually goes? They just get an increase every year, and that's that. You know, so when they're talking about like, hey, let's be a little bit more frugal with our money instead of just increasing money every year, he makes a decent point. Honestly, I kind of agree with him on a lot of points. But when we talk about like where do we cut spending if we want to be a little bit more uh, less reckless with our money, you know, where do we cut the money? Do we cut money from defense, which is over half the money? Do we cut money from Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid? Where do we cut money from? 
this is kind of the big issue going on in Congress right now. Because when you when you talk about you know government spending, if you look at defense, it's over half the money. When you add in Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and those programs, because those are the big headlines that I've been showing you here that uh, you know some Republicans are talking about. When you add in uh, defense, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and all those programs, that's like a vast majority of government spending. When you, because remember, military is over fifty percent, and you add in all those other programs that they call entitlement spending, it's probably like seventy-five percent of the government budget. So, uh, if you're talking about none of those programs, the the, the amount of the leftover money is less than probably twenty-five percent of what's left over. So, um, you know, people get all up in arms about like the money that like went to Nancy Pelosi's park or, or something like that. And I get it. I get it. Um, but that's like, you know, 0.000001%. And don't get me wrong. If the park wasn't named after Nancy Pelosi or whatever, nobody would have been up in arms in it. But in all reality, money goes for parks in the United States. They they build new parks. So if the if they were just building a new park in some other states, nobody would have been up in arms about it, you know. Um, and that's just kind of the reality of things. So um, they're constantly building new parks and new children's playgrounds and things like that. Um, and that's just kind of how it is. If they were building a new park after Donald Trump's name, then it would have kind of been the same thing from the other side, Okay. But the reality of it is, is that type of spending here, when it when it's that type of stuff, is is very, very, very small in the whole scheme of the actual budget. You know, when you're actually looking at like making a dent in the spending for what America spends on, defense is over fifty percent. In in a few years, it's actually going to be a trillion dollars per year, and Medicare, Medicaid. Uh, SNAP benefits and all these other things are a large percentage of it. And remember that they just cut the extra SNAP bonus benefits here. They're going to be ending February is the last month. Yeah. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I don't know what they're going to be cutting, but I will keep you up to date here. So if you haven't yet, uh, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new uh, videos completely free to do so. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, thanks so much for liking and sharing our videos. You can click here to watch my newest video next. And here is a video I just did about new SNAP benefits and also talks about them cutting the SNAP uh, benefits as well. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.